Hello everyone, this is Red Vitus, and welcome back to my channel. This is part two of a series where I am cleaning and reassembling an 1880s Elgin pocket watch. In the first video, I disassembled the watch, and in this uh, video, I'm going to show you some of the, the prep work and repairs that I do uh, before reassembly. Here I'm uh, removing the, uh, the top jewels uh, from the balance cock in preparation for cleaning and oiling them. Now, uh, pocket watches of this era, the uh, jewels were held in place by a couple screws. Then once those are removed, I punch out the jewels. There's two of them. There's a cap jewel and a hole jewel. And I'll go ahead and uh, clean those jewels. I'm using peg wood, uh, which removes some dirt, uh, but also loosens uh, some of the uh, s some of the harder to remove uh, 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 solid oils that break down uh, that might give your uh, that might give a solvent a tougher time. And that's just watchmaker's pegwood. I dip the jewels in uh, in a solvent rinse uh, that dissolves any of those oils that I just loosened. And I set the clean jewels now on tissue paper. Uh, that does a good job of, of soaking up that solvent and uh, leaving me with a dry and clean, lint-free um, uh, uh, jewel. I'm going to go ahead and place the whole jewel back into the balance cock. Uh, since uh, the oil is applied to the cap jewel, I can I can put this one in first, and I just set it into place and uh, press it in again using the uh, uh, the peg wood, freshly sharpened. Now here I'm uh, applying uh, oil uh, to the cap jewel. This is Mobius uh, ninety ten that I'm using, and I apl apply a, just a small drop. Uh, into the center of that jewel. Now flipping the jewel over and placing it on top of the whole jewel. Now with both jewels in, um, I press the, uh, the cap jewel uh, firmly into place and reinstall the two screws and I only screw these in just until I feel resistance. Uh, these, are, these screws um, are small and easily stripped. And the last uh, check I make is to ensure that the, um, uh, the jewel is oiled properly. Now here I'm looking for a well-defined border of that oil droplet in order to provide the correct lubrication for the center of the jewel. Now turning to the uh, the lower jewel, uh, now this is the cap jewel, and I spotted a problem with this, uh, one that I didn't catch uh, two years ago when I serviced this watch last. Uh, there's a crater um, in the in the middle of that jewel. Uh, now surprisingly, this this watch ran fairly well, uh, even with that um, uh, even with that damage, uh, but this is something that I definitely want to replace. I'm first going to uh, punch out that jewel. Uh, this is a, a jeweler's press. And I set that uh, on top of, the, uh, of that bottom uh, stub and punch it out uh, with a, a conical punch that's smaller than the inner diameter uh, of, the, of the chaton. Uh, the next step is to um, uh, get my, uh, my jeweling tools out. And I want to uh, open up the, uh, the bezel uh, in that chaton. Uh, so this this first tool that I'm holding is uh, is is for doing just that. Uh, it um, it's an adjustable tool that allows me to uh, open up and um, uh, that bezel to allow the new jewel to um, uh, to fit inside. There's another part of this set. Uh, there's also a bezel closing tool. This is the handle, and there's a set of of, of uh, dies for. Um, uh, basically burnishing and reclosing uh, the bezel. 
Uh, now here up close, I'm using the, the bezel opening tool. Uh, I have it I have it lightly oiled uh, with a heavy oil for uh, for opening that uh, uh, the, the foil in the chiton. Make quick work of that. Now um, here I'm uh, looking for a, a new capsule, and I have an assortment of different sized uh, capsules. Uh, now these uh, th these jewels they come in all different um, uh, sizes, colors, and um, I'm attempting to match the uh, the diameter and the thickness uh, of the jewel uh, uh, that 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 came out as best as I can. Um, so um, these come in a variety of colors, as you can see, uh, from very light uh, to very uh, bright red. These are these are natural garnets, uh, as would have been used. In the watch when it was made. Uh, synthetic jewels didn't come around until the 20th century. And this is a tends to be a rather laborious process, a lot of trial and error. Um, so it's good to have, I, I think, you know, a decent sized assortment uh, of these jewels if you work on pocket watches. Uh, having selected the proper jewel, I'm now going to close the, the bezel over it uh, with the closing tool. Now I just set that on top again using uh, using an oil to aid the process. Uh, wrap that uh, that foil back over the jewel, and here's the uh, completed um, uh, chiton with with the new jewel. And hopefully that uh, uh, that lasts for another 140 odd years. Now I reinstall and oil the jewels. And the next thing I'd like to do is to uh, is to test uh, whether the balance moves freely. The balance pivot should be in contact with the new capsule that we installed, which is located below the balance. And if we observe any issues with the uh, motion of the balance, that might be related to the depthing of that capsule. If there's a, if there's a sudden stop in motion, that could indicate a problem. And what I'm expecting to see is that the, uh, the vibrations uh, dampen out slowly and it comes to a very gradual uh, stop. Um, I don't have any good guidance for how long it should, it should, uh, it should vibrate like this, but uh, as you can see here, it goes on for quite a while and it doesn't come to any, any sort of immediate stop, uh, which is pretty impressive, you know, for a, uh, a watch that's well over 100 years old that it can still perform to this level uh, with with some uh, uh, rather basic maintenance. Uh, so these watches were really uh, made to last. Now you can see it just um, it just refuses to stop, <laughs> even when you think it's a uh, it's on its last uh, it's on its last turn. It keeps going. So I checked this in, in all um, uh, in all the positions. I mean, the both dial up or both uh, horizontal positions and one of the vertical positions to make sure it performs similarly. And I timed this out at uh, just under two minutes. So I was pretty happy with that. The next repair uh, I, I undertook was to deal with these bushings. So these are um, uh, this is the center uh, that's the center wheel, and it sits in a brass bushing. So that brass metal is softer than the pivot, and it's uh, it's worn down over time, and so I want to close that uh, uh, that hole a little bit. Uh, this wasn't the only uh, bushing that I uh, that I paid attention to, and uh, so the first thing I did was uh, was to do some research and to find out uh, exactly um, uh, how to uh, to make this repair, and uh, so one way. Uh, um, and the way I selected was to use a staking tool. So I got out my, uh, my KD staking set. And I set the, um, uh, the, the top plate in that staking set. And with a round punch, I gently uh, I tap that hole closed. Um, here I'm, I'm tapping the, um, the stake. And then I'll rotate it and tap it a few more times. And then check uh, um, uh, how the hole looks. 
I follow this up with a smoothing brooch to even out and round the hole. Now here's the finished result. Uh, let's look at the uh, pivot while I rotate the wheel back and forth. And I think it shows pretty clearly that there's a much less side shake than before. So overall, uh, this wasn't uh, too bad of a repair to do. Uh, what I like about uh, this method is that it's, um, it's relatively simple and it's quick in that I was able to, um, uh, to reduce the size of four of the bushings. Uh, the only one that didn't need work was the pallet fork. Uh, but all the others uh, had been widened over time. Another reason I like this method is that it doesn't leave any evidence that work was done. So other than to a skilled watchmaker with magnification, uh, there's really no signs that uh, anything was changed or repaired. That will conclude the episode, and I hope you've enjoyed me walking you through. I, I'd say the highlights of some of these repairs, there's a lot more depth that I could go into, uh, which maybe I'll do in a future video. My next uh, video will be on the reassembly of this watch, so I hope you'll join me for that. This is Red Vitus. Thanks for visiting my channel, and I hope to see you again.